What's up everyone? Welcome back to our channel. It's Danny and Nick is over here working away. I am starting off with <laughs> a motivational talk for the day. Nick doesn't even know what I'm about to talk about, but so he might just chime in and have something to say or he might not, but we'll just see. Um, I felt like we've been doing a lot of like st straight up vlogs, you know, and we are going to probably be vlogging a little bit depending on how long my talk gets. But I did want to talk about making the leap because it is so fearful to make that leap. And it can be in whatever aspect in your life. For us, it was making the leap to start our own business and leave our traditional jobs. Um, but for you, it could be starting to sell a product or starting your own hobby that would require you to do something that's out of your comfort zone. It could be quitting your job to find a new job. It could be becoming a mom. It could be like literally anything that you want it to be in your own life, but I'm just gonna talk about my personal experience. People are always asking us questions on how we started Tales of Pup, how we were able to do it and all that stuff. And there are bits and pieces in all of our videos to explain that. I always talk so much with my hands. Sorry if that's distracting, but I can't help it. I just get so excited and passionate. I use my hands a lot, but I am going to talk about the leaps that I made in my personal life to get to where I am today. Maybe if you guys like this, Nick can make his own version, or maybe it'll end up being both of our versions in this video. We'll just see, but we'll just start off with where I started from. So I graduated from the University of Alabama with a degree in business marketing in 2017. Now, when I was getting out of college, let's say it was the beginning of my senior year, knowing I was going to graduate, go into the real world, what was I going to do? So it was the very beginning of my senior year when I started applying for jobs, going to the career fairs and all that stuff, and really making my LinkedIn look so perfect. I remember spending so much time on my LinkedIn to make it look good and someone actually reached out to me on LinkedIn and asked if I wanted to come to their interview in Atlanta. And I was in school in Tuscaloosa, so it was a big deal. This guy worked for Amazon and he found my LinkedIn profile. I put in all this hard work to create it. It was w worth it because he found me and he was interested in interviewing me. So um, he was willing to pay to get me to where I needed to be for the interview, be a part of this big interview. I was so excited, drove there, um, where he was willing to like fly if I wasn't close, which was really cool. I was like, wow, a company's gonna fly me to an interview. That was like so cool to me, I remember. And I got there and um, I made a friend with this girl. We were both really excited about the interview and there's probably like 15 people in this group interview, but I felt really confident, which was hard for me because usually I'm really shy, but when I was in a room with 15 people competing for the job, I really had to get out of my comfort zone and sell myself really to this guy who was interviewing for the position and I ended up leaving pretty confident in my interview and I was like even if I don't get the job I know I did my best and it was only a few days later I got an email I opened it up I remember it was an email that shot confetti said congratulations that I got the job this was September so the very beginning of my senior year I was so excited couldn't believe it I was going to be working for Amazon and at this point, Nick and I, wait, was it September? Were we dating when I got that offer? Yeah, I don't... It was your senior year, then yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, I was like, I felt like we were, <laughs> yes, okay, so I'm getting confused with my dates, yes. So we were dating, and um, that was where it became hard because this job was going to send me to any state. We didn't know where it was going to send me, but if I took the job, it was going to be, you could be pulled to California. I could have been in Georgia. I could have been in Pennsylvania, but you just didn't know. So after the email with the confetti, all the excitement, you know, Nick was the one who brought the reality to me of, is this what you want to do? Where every other person was like, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, they also sent over all of the paperwork with how much money you were gonna make, all the benefits, all this stuff, and it sounded like the dream package. You were coming out of college making what, nothing like what most people were making. You were making a ton of money. You were getting stock in the company. You were getting a signing bonus, ton of benefits that were just, seemed like the best thing ever. But at the end of the day, Nick and I were talking, is this what you want to do? Now, the biggest fear was them plopping me in a city where I had never been, knew nothing about, 
and that really scared me, um, just being sent somewhere random, because um, you really had no idea where your job was going to be. And um, also the fact of me watching some YouTube videos on people who worked in that job or were, who were currently working at, in that job, which they were, I didn't see one nice thing about the job, so that started to worry me of, you know, there are these giant warehouses where you're walking so much, you're on your feet all day, it seemed like this dream job, but it really, in reality, what you were doing on your day-to-day -day things was um, like kind of telling people what to do, and I'm, I that didn't think that was going to be the best job for me. So I had to make the leap and, you know, tell my mom, I don't think this is going to be the job for me. And, you know, she was like, this is the best opportunity. Why would you turn it down? But I just didn't feel right. Like, it just didn't seem like that was the job for me. So that was really hard as all these people in my life telling me, do it for the money, do it for this, do it for that, and do everyone it for the- Everyone except me. Everyone except for Nicholas, who Nicholas was like, you gotta do what you wanna do or you're gonna be miserable. And so I just decided, you know, let me look at my other options. I'm not gonna respond to the job yet and I'm going to keep interviewing and see if I can find something else. And that's when I came across the Ritz-Carlton and that position of being the guest experience expert. Um, that is what I ended up doing out of college. And it was hard because it was less money and, you know, you want to make a lot of money, but it was going to keep me here in the city with Nicholas and um, he did end up proposing after I graduated. So we were engaged and I was happy to be in the same city as him and I was dealing with people, but I wasn't having to tell people what to do. I was getting to help them have the best experience on their vacation or their business trip. And that was just like a way better job for me. I really did enjoy that job. and if. I ever had to go back to a traditional job or chose to do that I would definitely look into working in a hotel again because I really did enjoy that job the reason that I left that job is because that hotel was closing down so it seemed like in that moment it was the perfect opportunity for me to reevaluate what I was doing what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go in the future so that is when I started looking at my options. At this point, Nick had been working an extra year longer because he graduated earlier, and he was also taking my job search into consideration for himself as well. And so we were both looking at our options of what we could do, and that's when he started realizing maybe he wanted to do marketing, and he was in the business school, so he did finance and economics, but he had an interest in what I was doing, which was going to be marketing. So we both decided let's start our own marketing thing. Um, at this point we were living with his parents, so we didn't have rent to pay and just all expenses were less because you didn't have a mortgage or taxes and that kind of thing, home taxes and stuff. So it seemed like the best opportunity to take a leap to do something totally crazy and totally different. And that's when we started Danny and Nick, which is our other business where we were doing marketing for small businesses. It was a ton of fun. We really liked it. We were kind of a whole package brand where we would take photos, execute the marketing and do everything where a lot of brands were like, you have to have a photographer then we do the marketing. So we did everything, which was super fun. And we would definitely do that again at some point if we wanted to go back into marketing. But now we do that for ourselves. So that's what's pretty crazy is like, what we did for other people, now we're doing for ourselves. And you guys know the story of Tales of Pup and how it came. We were making um, bandanas for Holly and Gracie once we got them. And then I told Nick, you know, there is a market for this. I think we could do this. Why don't we just try it and see? And that was like, honestly, the scariest thing I feel like when I came to him and I was like, do you think maybe we should try to sell these? Like, I was so nervous to tell him. And right away, it was the total opposite reaction of what I was expecting from him. He just said, yes. He literally, we got in the car right then and went and got some stuff. Like, that is a supportive husband. <laughs> but... I mean, I just was so lucky that he, he wasn't like, what? Or like, why would we do that? We know nothing about that. Like, he literally didn't say any of that. He was just like, yeah, let's do it. And I think, I don't know, why were you so excited about it? Why did you think it was a good idea? Do you know? I didn't know that it was a good idea. I didn't even know dogs really wore bandanas, but I don't know. I just was trying You were to just support. ready to do, you were supportive and ready to do something different, maybe? Yeah. And like something fun. And so we just well, started. I wasn't even going to do it. Yeah. What's so crazy is all of our vlogs about Tales of Pup um, really started once it started picking up in December. We started in 
October basically. And so from October to October, November, and a little bit of December maybe um, was mostly all me. I was cutting, sewing, cutting and flipping, packaging. I did it all. Nicholas, until Black Friday. Yeah, until Black Friday of the first year, I did everything and Nicholas stayed doing marketing for those other small businesses that we still had signed on. So we were kind of doing two different things and it was that just seemed like maybe this is what we're gonna do. And then as soon as we got super busy after Black Friday, I was like, Nicholas, you have to come downstairs. I need help right now. Call your mom, call anyone you know. I need help and I can't keep up. And that's when Nicholas came and help, started helping every day. Um, his mom did come help a couple of times, which was very nice because we were like, we need help right now. Um, Black Friday was just so crazy for us. So that's kind of, how we took leaps throughout our journey. Um, I guess even if we wanted to rewind even more, taking a leap from Pennsylvania to going to school in Alabama, like that was a crazy leap for me. Um, it's something scary. You aren't sure how it's gonna turn out, but if I wouldn't have made that leap, I wouldn't have met Nicholas. I wouldn't have gotten my degree from Alabama. I wouldn't have ended up in Georgia. I wouldn't have ended up at the Ritz Carlton in Atlanta. I wouldn't have ended up starting Tales Up Pub. I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't made that leap when I was 18 years old. Now I'm 25. So like each of those things led to where I am today. So this is all to say that if you are looking for a sign to take that leap, let this be it. You guys need to take a little leap towards whatever your end goal is. Start by making a list of things that you want to accomplish in the next year, in the next five years, and then you can backtrack and say, what do I need to do to accomplish that goal? Where can I start now to achieve those goals five years down the road? And you make little leaps along the way, and then you'll accomplish those goals eventually. You will never think the timing is right. There's always an excuse to be like, well, maybe not right now, maybe a little bit later. The timing is never gonna be right. You just have to decide and do it. And my thought with the risk taking, cause there is so much risk with taking that jump was I think your way, I think society will tell you take risk as you get older maybe, like you're more settled on all this. If I actually think it's the opposite, I think you can accept way more risk when you're young, when you have way less responsibilities. Like Danielle said, we were living with my parents. We didn't have that many expenses. The bit, you know, we weren't that set in our careers. If things went bad, we could have always just went back and got a job again and figured it out from there. And if things went good, there was a lot of upside. So yeah. I think that you're way better to accept risk when you're young, actually. I agree. And I did want to talk about the video that we saw where um, this guy was talking about people turn out like their parents because you seek your parents for advice. And that's where I strayed from the path. I first seeked my mom for advice on that Amazon offer where she was like, do it, do it, do it. And that's what she would have done. And then I could have ended up in a path similar to hers where if I wouldn't have gone against what she said, done what I believed was right, then I wouldn't be where I am. So you don't always need, you should seek advice from those that you love, but you don't always have to listen to it. Or if you have good reasons to differ from that, um, just know that if you're seeking advice from people that you aspire to be and follow in that path, then you could, does that make sense? Yes. If you're seeking advice from someone who you don't want to turn out like, not that I don't want to turn out like my mom, that's not what I'm saying, but my mom is in a traditional job and has done that for 40 years where her advice will lead you down. Her path. advice would have led me to that traditional job for the rest of my life. So just be aware of who you're seeking advice from and if that's where you want to be and that will help you along and, the way. And that goes for starting the advice for starting your business. There's a lot of people that Danielle and I talk to about like starting our business, whether that be friends, family, mentors, and there are some really, really successful mentors that we talk to that literally almost like laughed us out of the room, laughed at a lot of our ideas, like didn't actually laugh in our face, but you could tell like, uh, keep at the drawing board. It's because they didn't understand. And just because and they're successful, and sometimes. still don't. And just because they're successful at what they do does not mean that they're authority on all business and all things that can be successful. Sometimes the best ideas, you are the only one that believes in it for the first, you know, little bit. And you have to be the one blazing the path and then eventually people will get it. And if they don't, then it doesn't matter. They don't, not everyone has to get it. Mm -hmm. So true. This video turned much longer than I thought. <laughs> This is awesome. I had so much to say, and I feel like I will have more to say. We can do a part two on this. And taking a leap is the scariest part when you're starting your business. So I think this video is helpful. Yes. 
So let us know if you have any questions and maybe you can put in the comments something that you want to leap towards to accomplish your goals this year. Um, I know we're getting near the end of the year, kind of. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope we gave you a little motivation, inspiration. insight, inspiration, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.